Hey everybody, it's your boy Jay Rich. You know me, Spider-Man, all day, every day. Check it out. I'm making another game. All right, so we know about my other game, VT Heroes, right? Deck building, fighting card game, 1v1, all that dope action. I wanted to change the genre up and see if I could do something else. So I decided I wanted to get into the realm of shooters, you know, like Call of Duty, all that kind of stuff. But I want to turn it into a card game. How sway? My crazy behind came up with Rival Aim. Yes, it's a two to ten player arena shooter. Now check it out. You have melee attacks, ranged attacks. You have common loot, rare loot, legendary loot. You can run away. You can take cover. There's even a nuke. Let me stop myself right there. There's even a nuke that can kill almost everybody. I just took all the logic behind shooters and I put it to the simplicity of Uno. Wow. Crazy. There's going to be only three tiers. You can buy the game, you can get the game and the shirt, or you can get our super combo package where you can get the game, the shirt, a copy of VT Heroes, and a VT Heroes shirt. Now that right there, that's just, I mean, come on, help a brother out. For you, yeah, yo. There will never it matters, and even more when you feel like it doesn't. Protect you so you never feel like you wasn't. No, I'm right alongside you. Here by that, I'm behind you, but always got you. Hinder discussion, nothing means more. First one to offer his shoulders for what you preach for. Thought I saw the eyes of the world until I seen yours, and know that I ain't see a better view yet. I'm with whatever, so don't ever you fret. Know that you covered, not a hurdle or a heartbreak to change what a partake. Cause none of them won't ever get comfortable in your walkway. My job is to aware you, fully loaded, prepare you for all of the above that I'm never letting get near you. But still, I know, give you every advantage I found. Couldn't find a better fit for them, along with my crown. And since the baton was passed, I've been down. Cause failing's not an option, and dad is not a noun, not at all. Welcome to another episode of Dad Is Not A Now, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, as well as changing the narrative on the things I care about. And on this episode of Dad Is Not A Now, I was able to find the original cell real pitch of Sesame Street. I uh, was pretty interested. It was created by Jim Hansen, but the catalyst started from a lady by the name of Joanne Gas Gas Cooney, a TV executive who co-founded a report, the potential use of television for preschool education, um, which became the catalyst of Sesame Street. So I wanted to share this interesting uh, sales pitch reel because, you know, I'm 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 a nerd when it comes to stuff like this. And then also in the link below will be the report if you want to check it out. recognition of the letters of the alphabet, numbers, basic reasoning skills, and a better awareness of themselves and the world around them. When the workshop goes on the air, the puppets you'll see in the film will be joined by real people who will set each segment into the proper learning context. The techniques we're using at the workshop are quite deliberately drawn from approaches which have proven effective on commercial television. Fast action, humor, and animation have become established means of attracting children's attention to television. And we're using these same techniques to motivate children to absorb the curriculum content of our series. You'll note in one or two of the animated cartoon sequences in this film, which are among the very first that we've commissioned, that the short, simple, 60-second form used by TV advertisers 
Learn to sell, sell products, products is used, is used here, here to teach, to teach numbers, numbers and letters. And letters. As teachers, as teachers and parents, and parents know, know, young children young learn through repetition. repetition. And so, and so as with television ads, this, this material will be repeated many times during the 130 hours of original programming in our first season. We want to emphasize that the children's television workshop is an experiment. Research is woven into the total fabric of the show. Every segment is being tested and evaluated by the top critics, critics of all, the, the children, children themselves. themselves. I, I think, think it's fair, fair to say that by the time our program goes on the air, it will be the most thoroughly researched show in the history of the medium. Now let's see the film. You know what this is, Kermit? A really bad triangle? Well, come on, Kermit, it's a circle. Okay, so it's a circle. So? Well, you know that, but a lot of little kids don't. You want to see a groovy way to teach them what that is? Oh, you know it. Okay, the idea is to look for circles in the things you might see every day. I'm hip. <laughs> Why? 
Well, so are a lot of other people, Muppets. And they're all going to do the show, right, fellas? Yeah! Yeah! Well, if I'm going to get involved, I want to know a little more about it. It's like, uh, what are those guys doing? Well, you see, we haven't settled on a title for the show yet, so the guys are working on it. Uh, how's it coming, fellas? Uh, all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right, then, all right. How about this for a title? The two and two are five show. Uh, that's not yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Right. Now, this is supposed to be an educational show. Two plus two don't make five. They don't. No, you meatball. Then how about the two and two eight five show? Oh, it sounds like it's going to be a real smash. Uh, what's the idea of this show? Well, the idea is to teach little preschool kids some stuff that'll be useful to them in school. Like numbers and letters and like that. And your idea is that kids are going to erase them from baseball and turn on the educational TV channel to be taught letters and numbers. But they will, Kermit. Because all the teaching stuff is mixed in with stories and cartoons and us Muppets and real people and like that. And we're going to spend lots of time and money and make sure they know all about it. Oh, that doesn't sound cheap. Well, it's not. How much money have they got to do it? Oh, upwards of several million dollars. Yes. Want to see some of the little films that'll be in the show, Kermit? Yeah. Okay, here's one to teach the alphabet. <laughs> Go ahead. Now. Now. television workshop they got an advisory board of the best people in the country and a research department who are studying kids and testing material and any frogs on this advisory board of course not study any frogs in this research department no i, I told you Kermit. this show is for kids now here watch this to make little kids start thinking about how their bodies work like hands and feet and like that uh, watch this <laughs> Okay. Yes, 
it's not a show for kids, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, for well, kids. Well, how's about we call it the Little Kitty Show? Well, I don't know. That sounds all right. I like it. I like yeah, it. I like it. Yeah. But we ought to say something about the show, telling it like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe the nitty gritty Little Kitty Show. Yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's not bad. You know, I, 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 like, I like that, you know, but little kitty can mean any child up to the age of seven and eight. Now, I think we should aim this show right at the preschooler. Well, then, how about the itty bitty nitty gritty little kitty show? Yes, uh, that's like, that? like that. Like that? Well, I like that. That's not what we do. What do we do? What do we do? You really think you're going to get this show on the air? Well, never mind them, Kermit. Now watch. Now, this is a countdown to a rocket launch to help kids recognize the numbers. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I hope your show works better than that rocket. Well, that was only his first try. He'll get it. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. An accident. It could happen with anybody. Uh, you'll, you'll get, get it next time. time. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Arrivederci. You know, Ralph, you're not only got a crummy rocket there, you're going to have a whole generation of kids counting backwards. Oh, we're going to count forwards too, Kermit. Watch. One, two, raise your shoe. Three, four, remove the door. Five, six, rub out the bricks. Seven, eight. Sit down and wait. Nine, ten, in trouble again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Somebody remember it though, you know. No, not a chance. Uh, yeah, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Well, we shouldn't we shouldn't aim at either just the city kids or the country kids. So we call it the itty bitty farm and city. Witty, ditty, nitty, gritty, dog and kitty, pretty little kitty show. Yeah. That's the worst yeah. title I've ever heard. Hey, what's he doing? Hey, listen. Hey, boy, my name is Does anybody at the children's TV workshop know what he's doing? Or are you just doing the whole thing with your little doggy brain? If you just pay attention, Kermit, I'm trying to tell you. Easy, boy, easy. You need a booster for your distemper shot there. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, hey, Jerry, you got a minute? Sure. Here's Jerry Lesser. He's the chairman of the advisory board to the workshop. Hey, Jerry. Kermit, this is Dr. Lesser of the Harvard University School of Education. Hello. How do you do, sir? Jerry, could you help us by explaining to Kermit here how they're putting this program together? Oh, I, I think so. Let's see. First of all, back in the summer of 1968, we held a series of seminars with the workshop staff and all kinds of teachers and uh, sociologists, child psychologists, literally hundreds of people who know and care about teaching preschool children. Hmm. Those uh, seminars kind of tuned the TV people into the education world. Is, uh, is that it? Exactly. Hmm. Then those TV people went home and started thinking about the program. Mm -hmm. Now, say they get an idea for a little cartoon to teach the letter J, okay? Okay. Well, they kick it around until it sounds good to them, maybe write a script for it, and then they take the idea to an animation house. That's the cartoon people, Kermit. Right. And the animators go to work making up a storyboard. Now, that's a kind of comic strip that shows how the cartoon will look. And then the workshop people call in some of their advisors and go over the storyboards right down to the last detail. With the letter J. And the two boys are sitting there talking and kind of casually. One boy says, what's happening, man? Yeah, this is Dave Connell, head of production for the show. Between them and comes closer to camera. One boy says, what's that? The other boy says, I don't know, it looks like a fish hook. And at that point, we will animate the J into a fish hook. There's Dr. Edward Palmer, our research director. Um, 
And Bob Davidson, assistant director of the project. Like this letter looks like, or I think it's a very good idea. But there's always the people. And Dr. Marion Blank, one of our advisors. She's a child psychologist. Jay, you can call it a bishop. Joan Cooney, executive director of the project. Of what children seem to remember. There's Edwina Myers. She's a teacher who's taught hundreds of four and five year olds, and she was advised. She was asked to advise us on this particular film because she's a curriculum specialist. You know, extraneous sort of material that leads into it. The words here are very difficult, you know, most yes. the uh, jive, well, jive and jump and jive June bug and jive, yeah. Jane O'Connor is a teacher who's on the workshop staff full time. You're not arguing for a more didactic approach no. so much as saying that this is a difficult yeah. entertainment. Yeah, right. Many of them are terms which the children are hearing or may be hearing now a great deal, such as jogging, you know, which is the big right. thing. And the judge, you know, to see the judge, sort of an additional kind of learning. We're going to have to consider to some extent, you know, what they're able to see, although they may be caught by it. If it moves very quickly, then it may end up being just pure entertainment, if, if really that for children who don't get the fun in the words. If it moves slowly or if it's repeated often enough then you may get some of that i'm not too sure about the the movement the movement of it bothers me well we're calling these things commercials for our own shorthand and we're planning to to treat them essentially the same way a commercial enterprise would, would create a campaign but we're trying to sell the alphabet to preschool children so they check out every idea with as many experts as possible before going ahead with it. All right, crazy. Well, what if the experts tell them it's a bomb? Well, they throw it out and start again. But if they're on the right track, they incorporate the advisor's suggestions and go to work making the film. Hmm. You're just a couple of guys sitting there talking and kind of uh, some things happen around you. That, uh, let's go back. They record the, the soundtrack and decide right, on the final right. details. And um, don't, um, don't be... Uh, quite so speedy okay i think that other yes was a better that was an enthusiastic one okay you got that let's try one more time go ready all right now. what's happening man i don't know what's that i don't know looks like a fish hook it's not a fish hook it's a j a what the letter j like to hear the story about the letter j boys yes then the artists go to work making the hundreds of drawings they'll need for the animation. That's exactly how every little detail of the children's television workshop comes to life, Kermit. It's a collaboration between production, researchers, and educational advisors. Oh, so what did they come up with after all that? Oh, well, sorry, watch. What's happening, man? I don't know. What's that? I don't know. Looks like a fish hook. It's not a fish hook. It's a J. A what? The letter J. Like to hear a story about the letter J, boys? Yes. Once upon a time, a guy named Joe noticed a June bug on his toe. Put it in a jar and started to go. But here come the judge and said, no, no, no. So Joe said why and started to jump and dance a jake on an old tree stump. Then jogged along to the city dump where he jammed the June bug in a tire pump. Then the judge caught up and started to wail and said to Joe, justice will prevail. Then the jury met and set the bail and Joe got an hour in the city jail. So that's the letter J. It still looks like a fish hook. You know what else we learned? Yeah, don't try to adjust by jamming a June bug. Groovy. Yeah, but that's not all. Even now, before it goes into the program, the film is tested on a sample audience. Oh, well, how, how's it tested? Well, I'll show you. Yeah. I don't know. Looks like a fish hook. It's not a fish hook. It's a jig. In this case, they showed the J film to three pairs of children. Two of the children saw it six times in the TV program. Two of them saw it three times. And two saw it only once. And then they were tested to see what they learned. We saw a story on television about one of these. 
Did you find the one with Scott's story yet? Yeah. Look, which one do you think we saw story? You pick it up and give it to me. Which one do you think we saw story? That's good. What is it? A J. A J. Right. I want to show you something else. Okay? We saw things that started with a J. We saw a judge. We saw a jar. Now we're going to look at some pictures. And I want you to tell you where they started with J. I'll tell you the name. Here's a dog, a jacket, a table, and an airplane. Can you call the one with Jay? Which one do you think it is? Okay. This is Barbara French with her workshop research on recording the test results to Dave Connell and Ed Palmer. That explains things well, but it's too rough, Dave. That's thanks, Jerry. Well, I'm glad I could help. What do you think, Kermit? Well, just one question. Are you really depending on that bunch to come up with a title? You never can tell, Kermit. They just might think of the right one. <gasps> hey. These kids can't read or write, can they? Mm -hmm. No. Uh -uh. Then how's about we call the show Hey Stupid? Hey Stupid? Okay. Hey, that does it. Ouch, guys. Think of a title without you. Ouch! Get out! Get out! Come on, come on, come on. Get out! Oh, listen. Come on, out! Oh, way out! Come on! The smartest move ever made, bro. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Me and my big mouth. Who's going to find, find us a title, a title now? now? Well, well, what, what sort, sort of a title, title are you looking, looking for? for? Well, something that says we're going to open up new worlds for these little kids, you know, but not too cute. Oh, what am I going to do, Kermit? Well, uh, uh, where's this show going to take place? Well, on a street, on the front steps of a house. That'll be the main place. What are we going to do for a title? Open up new worlds, a uh, street. Uh... Hey, Ralph? Why don't you call your show Sesame Street? My entire career as a TV educator nipped in the... What, what was that? Sesame Street. You know, like open sesame? It kind of gives you an idea of a street where neat stuff happens. Kermit, why, you're a genius. Mwah. Yuck. Sesame Street. I love it. The kids will love it. I can see it. Up there in lights, the Children's Television Workshop presents Sesame Street. Oh, that's a great title, Kermit. Now, you're going to stay with us and help us put on the show, aren't you? Well, I don't know, Ralph, but you got to do it, Kermit, because it's going to be a terrific show. You know, it's fast and funny and educational, and we're going to have a ball doing it. Now, what do you say, little green buddy? We need you, we want you, we love you, and it wouldn't be the same without you. For the old children's television workshop, are you with us, Bella? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Shall I tell him I was kidding? Eh, I'll tell him tomorrow. <laughs> I hope Rolf and Kermit and Jerry Lesser have given you a better idea of what the Children's Television Workshop is all about. When we go on the air next fall, we'll be seen throughout the country Monday through Friday for 26 weeks. We're urging that the show be aired in the mid-morning, specifically at 10 a.m. in the East and West and at 9 in the Midwest. That's when the preschoolers in control of the set. Older brothers and sisters have gone off to school. Mothers are doing housework. And there's very little on television to compete for the preschool child's interest during those hours. We anticipate that many stations which air the program in the morning will be able to broadcast it again in the late afternoon. We hope you'll plan on participating in this important experiment in education beginning next fall. Thank you.